Welcome to my channel. My name is Antonio Gervasoni. I'm a Peruvian composer and university professor, and this is the third video in my series on music composition, which aims to introduce you to some key aspects of this wonderful art. In this video, I'll briefly explain the application of artistic principles to musical composition. Musical works can be evaluated according to a series of principles that describe how their constitutive elements are organized and how they relate to each other. These principles apply to all art, but here I'll focus on their application to music. We can define six basic principles, unity, variety, contrast, proportion, balance, and rhythm. I'll explain each of them using examples from the visual arts and then move on to musical examples. By unity, we understand a quality that makes a work to be perceived as a whole, as a single work of art in which all the elements contribute to give a sense of coherence and totality. The degree of unity of a work is directly related to the reiteration of certain elements throughout its development. As with all artistic principles, it is subjective and variable over time. Achieving unity in a total basis may be perhaps unattainable, but unity can be strengthened to a greater or lesser degree by the constant presence of the same elements, such as intervals, motifs, themes, harmonic sequences, timbres, textures, articulations, and so on. In the image on the left, we can see how the same element has been used to create a more complex construction, simply by varying the size and shade. Variety refers to the use of diversity and change to keep interest throughout a work. It maintains some degree of opposition to unity. In other words, too much variety can have negative effects on the degree of unity. Purely instrumental music makes constant use of this principle, otherwise it would become monotonous and boring. Vocal music can dispense with it in the instrumental part and apply it only to the lyrics. The degree of variety is subject to the preferences and tastes of the composer and, in some cases, to matters of style. Musical variation, that is, the changes that a musical element undergoes throughout a work, is, of course, the result of the application of this principle. In addition, there's usually variety within long musical phrases, such as themes. A theme is normally presented on a progression of different chords. It can have various motifs, time signatures, articulations, etc., and yet it'll still be perceived as a single entity. The image on the right has unity and variety, but you can see how, by making a series of contiguous triangles of the same color, a kind of interruption in continuity has appeared. It is not as unified as the previous image. Contrast is a noticeable difference between two items. It refers to the relative difference of certain characteristics between them. It's linked to variety, but it's not the same. Where there's contrast, there's variety, but the reverse is not necessarily true. A theme can be repeated in a different register, say, an octave up, without undergoing any change, that is, without experiencing any degree of variation, and yet we will perceive that something has changed. This is contrast in its simplest definition. The image on the left has unity, because the two objects are similar, both are fruits, and variety, because they both have differences in color and size. At the same time, there is contrast between the two, because there is a noticeable difference between them. Proportion refers to the size and quantity of elements in a work, which, in music, is related to the length of musical ideas, that is, their duration. An idea that is exposed for too short a time runs the risk of being perceived as unconvincing or inconclusive, while an idea that spreads too long could dilute its effect and generate fatigue. The appropriate duration of a musical idea is a relative question and is tied to the development potential of the idea itself. It is a principle whose perception is absolutely subjective and that sometimes generates differences of opinion regarding the same work. It's not possible to apply a formula to determine the proper proportion of any musical element. Rather, this is closely linked to intuition. The sense of proportion is a quality that each composer develops throughout his or her career. Some accomplish this quickly, while others take longer. The image on the right needs no explanation. We expect that the different parts of the human body have a certain size relationship to each other. This also applies to the elements of human forms of communication, and music is perceived as one. Balance refers to the way elements are arranged so that none of them is perceived as being heavier and therefore more dominant. In this sense, 
balance is intimately linked to the structure of the work and can only be perceived after listening to it in its entirety. Balance can be symmetrical or asymmetrical, and we have a certain preference for the first, which occurs when the listener divides the work in half in his mind after listening to it, and each half is perceived with equal weight. Asymmetrical balance occurs when sections of a work have different lengths and yet are perceived to have the same weight. Therefore, balance can be affected by proportion. If a section of a work is too short, it could be perceived as having very little weight, very little impact. But this short section could be extremely active and boisterous, compared to the softer and less active character of the rest of the work. The image on the left shows a symmetrical balance on both the X and Y axis. In music, balance can only occur in the former, which of course corresponds to time. Finally, we have rhythm, and I'm not referring to musical rhythm, that is, the relationships between the durations of the notes. Rather, I'm referring to the succession of structural elements, such as motifs, themes, phrases, and sections. The simple alternation between these elements creates a rhythm, which, depending on the complexity of the work, can be perceived during the listening process or after it has occurred, when the brain, in its attempt to make sense of the musical experience, creates an image of the work as a complete entity. In other words, this principle is related to the distribution of the form, or more specifically, the elements that make it up, and is of vital importance in any work of art. When these elements flow through a certain pattern, we speak of rhythm. Then, there is rhythm in the rondeau form, for example, in which a section is constantly repeated alternately. There's rhythm in the image on the right, because an element, the dancers, is repeated alternating with spaces in which it doesn't appear. I've only shown examples from the visual arts, because including musical ones would make this video too long. However, I'll briefly mention some that clearly show the application of each principle in music. There is perhaps no better example of unity than the first movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, in which most of the music is composed of the repetition of the same four-note idea. As for variety, it is present in all musical works with the exception, perhaps, of some very extreme examples of minimalist pieces. There is contrast between almost any movement in a multi-movement piece and the one that follows or precedes it. Most of the time, that is precisely the idea of having a piece divided into movements, presenting contrasting ideas and characters. Any piece by a well-established composer is usually well-proportioned. In fact, it's hard to think of an example where some section feels too short or too long. It's not that there aren't very short or very long sections in their repertoire, but rather, when they appear, their length is normally well justified. Balance is also easy to find. Just listen to a symphony or sonata by, say, Mozart or Haydn. If you divide any of their movements by about half, the two parts will be more or less equally balanced. Finally, I already mentioned the musical example of rhythm, the rondeau form, whose structure could be represented as A, B, A, C, A, D, A, and so on. This constant reiteration of A after each intermediate section establishes a rhythm. As we have seen, these principles coexist with each other and are related in different ways. Some of them are, in fact, inversely related. Therefore, the composer must find the proper relationship between them to achieve the expressive purpose of the composition. But be careful, the quality and effectiveness of a work are not necessarily related to the need for these principles to reach their highest potential. A composer may sacrifice one or more in whole or in part to achieve a specific effect. However, these principles and some others are indeed used to assess the quality of a work in academic contexts. Thank you for watching this video, and subscribe to be notified when I post a new one. I give private lessons online on composition. If you want to know more, click on the linked video or visit my website. The link is in the description below.